And lastly, I would like to congratulate Chief Lane and thank the police department, the city of Dillon Police Department, for their efforts in apprehending those two, the two criminals that were causing so much trouble around town. So thank goodness those guys are thank you, Chief. And that's all I have. Well, open up. It should be in your packet. Where I put in an order that the attorney Pastor gave us last week on the Royal Regency appeal hearing. And this order is just actually what we discussed during those appeal hearing or in that appeal hearing and what the conclusion was. So that before we leave tonight, you would team will get you to sign this order agree that this is what we discussed and what y'all decided on that appeal hearing in, on May the 18th for Royal Regency. Also here tonight, just to let you know, uh, Benny has invited Mr. Frank Anderson, sitting directly behind Benny. He is our building inspector that we use with Safeville. That we have a contract with that we went into last fall to provide our building inspections for the city. Frank is here to, to observe and to be introduced. Rate study. You should have a copy of the rate study for water and sewer in your packet. Um, there were graphs in there that kind of showed you where we were in the PD and in the state what we charge for water and sewer rates, which is at the low portion of everyone else. However, in our upcoming budget, during our budget workshops, there was discussion about rates and what we're going to do in the future year, which is one of the ordinances that we'll present tonight for first reading is our water and sewer rates uh, increase. How are we going to proceed with the water tap and all that? They're going to come back with another study for us on that to give, to give us more in-depth information. We're about the only community who also does not charge an impact fee. So they're going to look at that and give us something to go with. And then lastly that I have uh, on budget, Public notice and final reading of the budget is scheduled for June 26 at 7 p.m. That should be appearing in the newspaper, I think, Thursday. Mm -hmm. um, we have to give 15 days notice, and June 26 would be the last Monday of the month for that final portion of the budget. That's all I have, Mayor. All right, thank you. Janet. Okay. Start out with general fund. Our general fund unrestricted is two million five hundred two thousand seven hundred ninety dollars. Our general fund restricted seven hundred forty five thousand six hundred thirty three, giving a total of three million two hundred forty eight thousand four hundred twenty three dollars. Our revenues came in the difference of six hundred and fifty five. $1,841 more in 23 than in 22. And a lot of that is property tax, local option, sanitation, um, you know, different ones. It adds up when it, you start doing that. So our expenses in general fund was $831,080 more in 23 than in 22. That's due to the health insurance, salaries, ads, gas, diesel. So we're going to make up, we're going to make $1.7 million in June. You've got about 600 or so to come in from franchise fees. Um, you will have, you have about 150 in sanitation to come in. we still got funds from... Local option. Local option, sales tax, state aid that we'll still get, and business license. You know, we're about 600000 that we haven't collected through the municipal association left on business license. So we'll be pretty close. We usually get that at the end of this month. I know it's a big month. Yeah. I know that. It just seems like 
That's a lot of skill to make up one woman. Um, Water and sewer. Our total unrestricted two million two hundred ninety thousand nine hundred ten dollars. Our total restricted is two million four hundred ninety thousand nine hundred eighty two dollars. A total of four million seven hundred eighty one thousand eight hundred ninety two dollars. <coughs> Our revenues is the difference is twenty nine thousand eight hundred sixty six dollars more in twenty two than we did in twenty three down on that. Our expenses $335,132 more in 23 than in 22 and you can see what I put down there about the chemicals and all. Golf course, there's no comparison this month since the golf course has been closed for the month of May so I really didn't do anything there. Um, our expenses $102,132 more in 23 than we did in 22. 2% 2 hospitality funds, we've got a total of $1,039,177. We brought in $51,541 more in 23 than we did in 22. We have spent $54,629 more in 22 than we did in 23. Then our ARP funds, we've got $2,487,770 in that account, which we've got a lot of stuff that's earmarked, some stuff that is ordered, things that we haven't got in, so that'll be carrying over for the new year. Our stormwater, we've got $247,403 in it. Um, we brought in $1,183 more in 22 than we did in 23. We spent $214,730 more in 22 than we did in 23 due to the purchase of um, the back truck and the FEMA um, plan that they've done. I'm still waiting on those funds. I contacted them again and they're waiting on, FEMA's waiting on to finalize everything before we can get our money back from them. But they assured us we will get our funds back, but it's taken a while. Okay. That's it. Wow. That's a lot. That's great. Mm -hmm. All right. Miss Annie Smith. Thank you for coming out tonight. Thank you for allowing me to come out. Good evening. My name is Annie Smith. I'm the Executive Director of the Dillon County Boys and Girls Youth Center. I have with me tonight I youth from the High Project and some of my regular youth from the Dillon County Boys and Girls Youth Center. The Dillon County Boys and Girls Youth Center is a 501c3 nonprofit organization. We have provided programs in a nurturing environment to develop youth into productive and thriving adults since 2013. Our mission is to strengthen underserved young people as they achieve their full potential as productive, caring, and responsible citizens by improving the health, the education, and the opportunities of youth, adults, families, and our community. We have a grant from Hoshire and Company to do a hike project with some of the youth in the community. One of the projects our youth decided to do was to help with the beautification of one of our local parks, which is the Harmon Field Park. They wanted to sand and repaint the picnic benches and overhead shelter as a community service project. We're not sure what the procedures are in doing that, but we will be sending a letter to the city manager to see exactly what we have to do to do that project. Okay, we are here with the help of a grant, as I said, from Hoshire, the Healthy Young People Empowerment Project. It's what the HYPE stand for. It's a HYPE project. It's a curriculum-based youth engagement program that builds the skills of youth to become a greater voice in their community. While the curriculum fo focus on the policies, the systems, and environmental change process, it relates to healthy eating, active living. Youth are encouraged to use the skills they learn to be a lifelong champion of positive change. I asked a question to our youth. How do you make your community healthy for everyone? 
<coughs> and they all said by becoming a youth advocate through the High Project. Our teens learn to answer to these questions. They also learn how to ask local community leaders and decision makers for help with making their community healthier. That is why we're here tonight. Each student participated in a series of training sessions to learn about long-term solutions to healthy eating, <coughs> active living issues in their community. They learned leadership skills that can make them strong, confident, and in their community <coughs> to become successful adults as they become community leaders. After the training ended, the hype team took a field trip to have a closer look at their community, whether it was a neighborhood, a school, a school or a park. They had to identify healthy options available to their community and factor that discourage many healthy choices. For example, what keeps someone from using a local park? Are there broken sidewalks that make walking unsafe? Or are they just water fountains unavailable? Or bathrooms unavailable? For someone who has a health <coughs> issue, as a group, the hype teams decided what changes they wanted to make and how they wanted to make these changes happen. They discussed which local community leader and decision makers could help. And they worked together to make their idea a reality by making parks inviting and safe for people with children. The purpose of this project was a five-phase approach to youth empowerment. And one of those were, those five goals were sharing, which is where we're here tonight to share the information that we have and to share our decision on how we got to where we are today. Public parks are an essential part of our community. They provide a space for people to relax, exercise, and connect with nature. However, our public parks like basic amenities such as water fountain and bathrooms. According to a survey conducted by the National Recreation Park Association, 75% of Americans believe that access to park is essential for their overall, overall well-being. However, without basis amenity like water, fountains, and bathrooms, many people may not be able to fully enjoy their spaces. We call on our local government to require that all public parks have accessible water fountains and bathroom facilities. This ensures that everyone has the opportunity to enjoy these valuable community resources without worrying about their basic needs. We believe in our cause, which is why we advocate for these petitions to be signed by our community members. And we have about 200 petitions from our community members that agrees with what we're saying about a water fountain in the bath and a bathroom in these local parks. Just an example, uh, two weeks ago I took my grandkids to the park and we were there all of 30 minutes when one of my grandson, about three years old, had to use the bathroom. So we had to pack up all our stuff and leave and of course they asked were we coming back and of course we were not coming back because <laughs> we had to go all the way home. So it's not fair to the youth. It's not fair to the older adults who walk that have health issues that they don't have a bathroom. They have the, the closest bathroom. On many occasions, we went out there as a uh, facility, as a center, as a group, and we had to go to McDonald's to use a bathroom. That is not fair for the kids. And so we, we're hoping that you all will consider putting bathrooms and water fountains in these parks. These right here are booklets that we put to, that they put together and it has the conditions of the Hammond Park. This is the one we're concentrating on because that is the one that we go to on a regular basis. I want you to turn your attention to, I think it's about the fourth page in there of that water fountain. <laughs> the water fountain is full of dirt and whatever. It hasn't worked for I don't know. 
I've been back 10 years and it hasn't worked in those 10 years I've been back. We want to thank you very much for allowing us to state our cause, and I hope you agree with us and come up with a reasonable solution and money to the bathroom and a water fountain at Hammondville Park. Thank you. Ms. Smith, thank you very much, and thank you for what you and your husband do for this community. We really appreciate it. These are great ideas, and we need to give us a little time to get back with you and let us try to work on this a little bit. Okay. Thank you so much, and thank you, thank kids, you. for coming out tonight. Okay. If I can answer, okay. I want to know what can we do to get the water fountain up and running? They all need to be replaced. Is there a way to get it up and running so we can come up with a signal? What we need to do? They're just old. I mean, that's just work it off. And they're all like that in every park that we have. We'll look at them. I'll get harder to get close to look at those to see. But most of them are just all the piping in them are broken or in the ground broke and things of that nature. And since COVID, we really had to worry about the water fountains just because of cleanliness, per se. You know, this doesn't run off electricity. It's not cold water. It's just water that's coming out of our system. So it's not any type of refrigeration or anything like that. But we'll look at it. Can we do that new equipment coming? Yeah, we do have new equipment coming to all of those parts. What is the time frame you think that new equipment might start arriving? Probably July, July. Somewhere, July. Somewhere somewhere in that time frame. Ms. Andy, there's going to be like $400,000 worth of new equipment going to Harmon Park. Good, good. No, not just at Harmon. How much was it? That Excuse me, I'm sorry, I misspoke. Yeah, 400 all total. It's like 200 there. 200 and then Elizabeth Lane Park, right down on the Avenue, is getting some upgrades to the equipment there, too. And that's what I had just mentioned. <coughs> wonder if somewhere in that we could do some APR. And, and, and also, it includes other parts in the community. So we're doing an upgrade of equipment. To the park. Yeah. But we will address this and come back and get answers for you. Thank y'all very much. Anything else from any other citizens? All right, straight into old business. None. Glenn, none? None. All right, new business. All right, here we go. Ordinance 2311, sanitation rates, first reading. As you can see from Glenn's letter, this is the 9% lift, $2.68 per month. Do I have a motion? I make the motion, Mayor. Do I have a second? Second. Discussion? <coughs> All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Ordinance 2312, adjusting the utility charges, water and sewer rates, first reading. Again, refer back to Glenn's letter. The 5% lift, $1.33 a month. I make a motion. Do I have a second? I second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Golf course parking lot bid acceptance. And there again, you'll see it. Land, you want to say something? No, go ahead. I was a phone that's outside on the thing out there. I don't know who's phone it is. All right, thank you. Thank you. All right, golf course parking lot bid acceptance. So you'll see the bid in the packet here. Do we have a motion to accept that? I'll make a motion. Do we have a second? I'll second. All right, now let's discuss it. Glenn? How much? He said like $110,000 savings. When we originally did the bid, back in January and February, we didn't follow state procurement as far as advertising it for a ski boat. We got three quotes. I think the high bid was almost three hundred thousand. Low bid, no, I'm sorry, high bid was close to four hundred thousand. Low bid was close to two hundred thousand. So we had to rebid it. None of those three who gave us quotes first bid on this project, and. Trigger's Construction was the only one who bid on this project, but his original bid came in at 348000 which 
actually working with our engineers and with rigorous construction, there were some things that we decided that we probably could do without. And it saved us by doing that on this particular bid, hundred and almost a hundred one thousand dollars, which brings the take it as shaves is that small? Just mm -hmm. run it down that you know the uh, <coughs> maintenance road. Right? So it's, the total bid now is for two hundred forty-six thousand eight hundred eighty-five. How <coughs> much money we have a lot of <coughs> about that much? We got. No, we got five hundred fifty thousand that goes to the golf course, and we're around three hundred. Was it three hundred we came up with today? A little over three hundred thousand we had left so far. What yes, we sir. spent? Yeah. Uh, and what we were anticipating spending. So this would be covered in that five hundred fifty thousand. And if all goes well, hopefully, when I call him tonight, he can get started this week. We like for him to do it while the course is closed. Depending on his schedule. I'd like to ask one question. Mm -hmm. I know it's a steep low ramp. Mm -hmm. uh, and I know we have an audience. And it says that even though we only got this one bid, our audience says that we're supposed to have three bids. And I understand this is the first time I've ever heard of the state. I just want to make sure we're doing things right. We are. That, you know. We're allowed to go forward. We are. You know, our ordinance, our procurement policy says. Since we're, we're following the states. And then our ordinance also, if you read it again and, and go into it, three bids are for those that are not publicizing Skibo or any natural, I mean, any national organization for, for bids. Because you can't control, if you're going out and, and, and Requesting bids by telephone calls or, or things of that nature, we have to have three. And if it goes into a publication that goes out to a whole lot number of people or a greater number of people, we don't have to have three bids. So one other question is, let's say a grant, I mean a bid comes in through ski boat, mm -hmm. but two other grants come in by advertising from the Dillon Herald. Mm -hmm. So how do you address that? I'll just say one came in, come in from the advertising from on the same thing. on the same thing even though you know, we we don't use the advertising the bill and herald because it's only been you know a snapshot a snapshot of a group of people where a ski boat is nationwide southeast wide. so when you basically bid out something this big of a magnitude goes, you don't do it locally no, you just do it a ski boat yeah. and then we do put it either on facebook or on our website just so that way the local people can see. I saw the drivers this morning. They're, they're, they're ready to go. All right. Any more discussion? All right. Let's call it to a vote. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Wellness center daily use increase from five dollars to ten dollars. Do we have a motion? I'll make a motion. Second. Second. Discussion? All in favor? Yes, I do have a When does this go into effect? July 1st. Okay, July. Any more discussion? We'll put signs up yeah. after today or whatever to start. Yeah. Let everyone know. Let them all know that it's going to All right. Any more discussion? All right. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Let's move into council members' reports. Council Manel, you want to start? Yeah. Um, I want to see uh, about our laptops that we've installed into the police cars. Has the county done their part to help us? So now we are we're, we're, we're live. But, well, the county didn't. They they did some, but we we are we are live. So <coughs> so utilizing to get all the we can do. NCIC, they can they can be dispatched in the car. Um, the splash pad at the Wellness Center has been a big hit for the last month. Um, I was told that we've averaged about 25 to 30 people on the pad, and I think that's a good thing for the city of Um I just hope it continues and the people will take advantage of that. And, and take care of it. And take care of it. You got somebody that uh, is going to cover the, the, the Not for the splash pad. 
Well, the combination. Yeah. More so for the playground. Like this. Yeah. Maybe for the parents. Oh. For the parents. Yeah, that's true. Tomorrow night, there'll be a fireworks show at the city of Dillon Complex out here at the recreation. Um, Miss Ann and Mr. Mm -hmm. King. Like to see you bring your kids out here to the soccer fields. Oh, okay. It'll be a nice thing for you. This what we call it. Um, opening up to the summer. A store, a local store is putting on a little show. And it'll last about an hour, hour and a half. And it'll start at dusk off. So um, I know it's late notice, but I think it's a good thing for the kids to be able to enjoy. It. So that'll be tomorrow night around dusk off. And what he's talking about is the Superstore located out on Bradford Boulevard. Each year they'll go to our grassy area on the back side of the park to train their employees how to sell their products. So we always allow them to do it. The fire department goes out there and sits with them just in case there's something. It's a good training system for them and good entertainment. It's going out for, for B. We've got our survey reports done for asbestos. They were turned in to me late last week on the 20 properties. Now we'll put it out for bid tomorrow and it's scheduled for bid opening, I think, July 17th. Um, we'll have a pre bid meeting for folks to come in to look at all the properties and, and ask different questions. And um, the bid will be due on the 17th of July. Is, uh, Yeah, that's part of it, yeah. And remember, we only have roughly about $200,000 uh, earmarked for this project. I think that when it's bidded out, it's going to be more than 200000 So once we get the bids, we will sit down and negotiate and try to figure out which ones are, which ones should we do first. Because I think it's going to come in more than 200000 Have you seen the list of where the asbestos was in buildings? Oh, no, all buildings. All, all of them? Yeah, all of them. Yeah. All right. Mr. Beaney, will you close us out in prayer? And remember, we do have any more. Uh, when he finishes with the prayer, we'll make the motion to go into executive session. And I do want to thank everyone for their attendance tonight. Mr. Beaney. Father, we pray, God, and dear Lord God, we thank you for your dear Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and for your many manifold blessings upon these meetings, the city council meetings, upon our mayor, city council, our city manager, and department heads on tonight. Please bless our coming in, our going out, and uh, we'll be careful to give your name the glory, your name the honor, and your name the praise in all things that we do. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Amen.